Hello everyone, peaceful revolutionary you all. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this video. I have something special today. Something that I haven't done before. Uh, I want to do a little bit of an explanation or review of a scientific paper that is quite topical to what we've been discussing recently uh, around the uh, cash technologies, uh, free energy, and uh, general validation of science and all these things to kind of, kind of together. So, uh, and this actually came from a comment from uh, one of our previous videos on the cash stuff. Uh, a person that uh, that just wanted me to check something out that was relevant to uh, what Mr. Cash was saying on the uh, on his technologies and free energies and these these kind of things. And it's a um, <clears throat> it's about the Dr. Nassim Haramain. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I, <laughs> if I say his name properly. He's a researcher um, in uh, Hawaii of, uh, of Swiss birth, uh, but uh, working out of Hawaii and mostly around relativistic um, physics, which is really interesting. And what, um, what he did is in 2013, he published a, a scientific paper that was peer-reviewed Publish in uh, official scientific paper uh, that essentially adds a critical component, a very interesting critical component to Einstein's and other people's after Einstein's um, theory of relativity and uh, and uh, unification the um, unified field theory. <laughs> Shoot, I have difficulty with my brain tonight. Um, because Einstein and others were never able to really complete and what the unified field theory and what, what it is, essentially, is just to, to, to give you a heads up on it, is a, an attempt from physicist and mathematician to, uh, to describe the natural world, how it, everything kind of works together, all the forces kind of work together, uh, to have like a single set of rules or equations to describe everything and how everything kind of runs and balances itself, itself out all over the place. And uh, as you can imagine, it's it's quite complex because the world is it seems to be extremely complex at different levels, and science has evolved in a very uh, pro programmed way, like in different uh, fields and uh, in, in verticals, like quantum mechanics and physics, physics and biochemistry and, you know, quantum physics, and you got astron uh, astrology, uh, astronomy, sorry, uh, and the study of the stars and the galaxies. They're all kind of a different sciences that do talk to each other a certain, uh, to a certain extent, but uh, they don't have uh, common equations or common grounds so much to work from because they've kind of a diverged and worked in their separate, separate silos. And, uh, and how they, they, they kept working like these different fields of study uh, is trying to patch and try to explain things on uh, of their own. And those people that are working on unified field theory, what they're trying to do is marry all these things together so that uh, everything can be explained on a common ground of some sort. And, uh, you know, I'm a big amateur of Einstein because he, he did quite, uh, it was quite a visionary and uh, an activist and he did, uh, he did lots of really cool things and a lot of really cool uh, science and He's, uh, he's the one that developed the theory of relativity, which in a nutshell means that everything uh, has to be uh, considered according to a frame of reference of some sort. For example, the planet Earth, uh, for us that are standing on it, doesn't move because otherwise we'd be dizzy. We, we kind of move with it, right? It doesn't actually move in reference to our body. But in reference to the sun, it actually turns at incredible speeds around the sun and also it turns on itself. If you consider the Earth from the frame of reference of the center of the galaxy, then not only does it move according to the solar system dynamics, but also rotates around the galaxy along with the solar system at even greater speeds. So if you look at us sitting on the planet, we're actually moving extremely fast and in very complex motion mechanics uh, if, you, if you look at the center of the universe as our frame of reference. So that was Einstein's uh, kind of calculation, trying to, trying to figure that out, and the math around it. Uh, now, <clears throat> this kind of unified field theory uh, research has been going on since 1820 with James Maxwell. Uh, as equations or set of equations, and um, and what this uh, Mister uh, this Doctor Hermine did is that he he, started, he looked at all the fields like look I mean 
this is all messed up. It's all very messy and complicated and dark in each different silos. But if you look at the, if you go back to look at the world and look at the solar systems, you look at the atoms, how they are organized and how things kind of move and their forces around, they, they all look fairly similar. So there must be an elegant way or, or unified mechanism that makes everything kind of works together in a certain way that are that is you know it uses the same dynamics on a small small scale like subatomic and quantum level and and at the the very big like solar system galactic and intergalactic kind of levels you know, universal levels and uh, so he did his thing and over a number of years and then 2013 he actually published after giving many talks about the subject which i discovered only recently uh, he, he pushed out, well, look, I mean, the, the, what's unifying everything is actually everything spins. And he was able to prove using math that actually everything kind of falls together and spins uh, using the spin or what he calls torque. So it's uh, Einstein's theory, theory of uh, um, unified field theory with a twist, he says, which is kind of nice marketing uh, for the theory. And, um, and the, what's really fascinating, and this is pure science, this is academic science, uh, like mathematics, not application. It's really just science. But what it does, though, is it uh, is that it unifies things from the large scale to the small scale. So what happens at a very large scale also happens in a similar way at a small scale. And there's math now to support both that that works for both. So so we can infer uh, if you look at uh, at the energy of spinning planets, we know there's a huge amount of energy. Uh, that is around the just spinning of the Earth, the Coriolis effect, and different things that happen that that has a huge impact on the Earth itself, but also impacts the solar system. If you carry that dynamic and bring it to a small, like the atom, for example, where you have electrons spinning around a nucleus, uh, and you 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 um, you uh, manage to kind of um, uh, create equations, or you 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 make the calculations on the uh, on scale. From the planet to an electron, for example, the planet Earth and an electron, you kind of you notice that the amount of energy that is within an atom is kind of, quite, kind of significant, and given the fact that each cell has billions of atoms in composition. Multiply that amount of uh, of, of energy that is within the spin of an electron by like twelve billion or whatever it is the number. It makes a significant amount of energy that can be potentially tapped inside a cell. Right, uh, because it's it, it, does, it goes beyond the uh, the cell. It's it's these these are this is unified theory. So it's everywhere. It's everything at every level. Everything has a spin and a torque, and has potentially an energy that can be tapped. Uh, we're talking about the physical. We're talking about the waveforms. We're talking about like uh, uh, trying to describe using this this new adaptation of the unified field theory. And the physics world, uh, the world of physics. I mean, uh, it uh, the, the spin can be used to, and he's shown it, it. It can be used to describe how gravity is generated, how magnetism is generated, which we already knew quite a bit about in that particular case, uh, and how a whole bunch of other effects are generated that we didn't quite understand. We kind of see it, it like magic a little bit. You know, in science, there's no such thing. We just couldn't understand it. But now, based on this new research, perhaps using calculation, we can actually define certain things that we had a really hard time defining. So this is a paradigm shift uh, to me uh, in the in physical world. Now, the engineers of the world can look at this research, which is just recently validated by peer-reviewed by, by papers where people can say, okay, let's base, let's build on top of that. It's like a, a platform, a springboard. Let's build on top of that. The engineers can figure out, well, how do we tap into these energies and these forces and these things to create applications that will affect our daily life, including free energy, including uh, travel, transportation, different things. And I want to make a little parenthesis because I know many of my subscribers are following the cash technologies. You know, after 50 odd hours of watching Cash and listening to him, who's, he's a nuclear uh, engineer, so an applications guy, uh, he does talk about all these different things, but it's very convoluted because of the way he talks, he talks about these things. And this is not new. I mean, this research, research takes a long time. Uh, I know in the case of Haradime, 
uh, he's uh, he's been researching that fully and kind of describing all these these things at least back in 2009. At the very least, from my very small research about his past, I didn't really dig deep in, into the past. And his institute has been uh, has been re- researching on that particular field for years before that. Uh, so it's not, uh, and, and you know, the universe being uh, being infinite and these different things. These are not uh, unusual or a uh, uh, new concept. What's new with Haradheim in this paper is that he was able to actually prove it and show it in equation that the world is is like a fractal of spins at different levels, uh, infinitely large and infinitely small, in fact. Uh, so he's able to show it. That's the big difference. It's not a theory uh, or a hypothesis from a lot of people kind of trying talking about it and doing hypotheses. This is this is actually a, a, like a solid theory that seems to work at all the levels, and it's been tested in different other labs. And they were able to, uh, to to show that equations work at the different levels as well. So there's peer review, and there's also other labs that are third party that don't, that are unbiased that have shown that this works. So so now, <clears throat> uh, whether uh, Mr. Kesh arrived at the same conclusion in hypotheses because he didn't have any research to kind of support it, or uh, he, he's been uh, you know, uh, privy to some of these dis- these discussions, which is fairly likely in the scientific world that he's been aware of these theories, just like I have uh, at a hypothesis level uh, over a number of years, like 20, 30, 30 35 years. Uh, so so not surprising that he talks about these subjects and talks about the metaphysical a little bit, uh, because in quantum physics, there is kind of a, a slight sliver of metaphysical that we don't really get, but we're trying to to, to, to get to. And Mr. Hardheim, compared to Mr. Kesh, uh, he he talks in scientific ways as well. You know, there's all this, all this stuff that is metaphysical, but you know, I'm showing here that we can show how it actually works, and we can create equations to demonstrate that this magic, this mystery, is actually explainable. We just don't know how to yet, and we're, we're just one step closer to understanding the universe and the natural the natural uh, uh, way of things and different uh, and different uh, things like that. So, and I'm going to put in the, some links in the uh, in the description that you can check out more videos and different things uh, around it. And of course, my blog where I, I do a write up on the, uh, on the topic. So this is very exciting, and I want to do more of these. Um, you know, the, these like uh, reviews of scientific papers, real science, real revolutionary applications, perhaps in the future. In this case, this is a future applications. Uh, for for this particular research, it says, okay, let's we're proven this now on solid ground. We could take that and create real good engineering science. Now, if Mr. Kesh, uh, if Mr. Kesh's application works, we're gonna we're gonna know it doing testing. Like I, we're still waiting for the device. And we're, I'm still watching other people. Haven't seen anything work just yet. If it works, then it's a, a an application that was able to be developed before the research actually was able to prove that the world was so. That's great. But my point is, Mr. Uh, Dr. Haradheim and others that I pro- probably will talk about uh, in the next few weeks as well, that's real science that we can count on. doesn't mean that it's completely right, because science is always building on top of, of the science. And sometimes it proves the previous science wrong, but this in this particular case, what we're we're seeing is that the equations work. They work in all sorts of levels as predicted. And just like Einstein was not wrong, this addition to Einstein's work is an additional explanation of what we could not yet describe using Einstein's work. Einstein worked for a lot of stuff, but not for everything. Now this explains more, and we kind of add to it like an additive uh, process. That's good science and good peer review, and you know all this stuff. And even though there are powers that sometimes don't like new research coming out, thanks to the internet, it's really hard to stop when, when a scientist wants to get the word out. Like Mr. Ha- Dr. Haradheim did a significant effort with his institute to actually get the word out properly, so that more people would know about this. Groundbreaking uh, piece of uh, piece of research that can be that can have severe impacts on uh, on applications on our daily lives. 
you know, some of this research is kind of talking to her only spoke uh, spoken of in academic circles. The pe general people like you and I don't really know about it so much. Uh, but in this case, like I'm, I'm revealing it to you if you're not aware of it. Also in the uh, in the description, I'm giving you a uh, a way where you can keep up to date to, with scientific papers uh, through my uh, my philosophical group, which is composed of quite a few engineers and scientists uh, in proportion. About 12% of our uh, whole philosophy is uh, are either scientists or engineers, all atheists, of course. Um, so so we like to keep it up to date, which is uh, partly how I'm so much up to date without having to research uh, all the stuff on the internet all the time. So anyway, so uh, Dr. Haradime's research, Quantum Gravity and the Holographic Mass, that's the name of the paper. I'm going to be giving you the links. You can download the actual paper that was published. Everything's in the clear. It looks great. It's published. Boom. Videos. Uh, and the descriptions of how he describes things and others, other scientists around him describe things very, very clear. So you can check it out further, look into it. And us revolutionaries, we can bank on that being a good new stepping stone towards a really, really terrific future of science and technology and uh, and humanity being happy and, and joyful and, you know, with no war, with all, all sorts of peace altogether. So uh, so I'm going to do more of these. And there's another one I have in mind, actually. Maybe I'm going to do it next week if I don't receive the cash devices yet. Uh, and hopefully you can enjoy those. If you like these kind of videos, please comment. Uh, and suggest research if you if you want to do that, no problem. I can look into it. I can do a blog about about it and all that stuff, no problem. Uh, but just do comment uh, if you want to guide me a certain direction that uh, would be appealing to you guys. Go nuts! Uh, I'm always watching, always reading, always uh, writing. So, peace, love, harmony. Let's keep the revolution going, baby.